everyone, welcome back to another video. As you can see, I've got the brand new Castle Arts 48 Premium Pastel Tint Pencils. I purchased these the second I saw them on Facebook. Everybody started sharing them. They were absolutely beautiful. And of course, I just had to have a set for myself. Now, they just released these pastel tint ones. They also released a 48 set of metallics as well, and I've seen some people share their swatches and even videos of their swatches, and they are absolutely beautiful. I really do want those as well, but I have not purchased those yet. I've also seen that they have a new set. It is a 120 set of oil-based pencils that they're calling gold standard and I believe that they are available in the UK on Amazon. I'm not sure if those have sold out yet. The, they come in a 72 set as well, and the 72 set for a very short while was available on Amazon, and then it disappeared. So I don't know what the story was with that. I have an email out to Castle Art, and I'm still waiting for a response to find out more about those pencils. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox these and take a look at them. Everything that you see in this video, as well as the pencils that are still in stock, which would be the ones that come in the case, I will have that linked in the description box down below. I will also link the metallic set that has been newly released in the description box down below in case you're interested in those. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. We're gonna go ahead and unbox them. We have a lot to do in this video because we are going to unbox these and we are going to swatch them. And of course, you all know I have a lot of the different tests I like to do on all the new pencils that I receive and for these, I am going to have quite a few tests to do on them. I want to see how they lay down on paper. I am very curious to know if these are the same pencils as the original 120 set because when I open this up, you will see that they look very, very different. They're absolutely beautiful. They're not going to have the black barrels anymore. So let's go ahead and get these out of the plastic so we could take a better look at the tin. So the tin is absolutely beautiful. Look at this artwork and it's all just really pastel colors. It's so beautiful. But when you open the tin, it actually turns back like this and it, the top doesn't come all the way off because it's got these little notches here that hold it in place. So the tin is rather nice. And then up here, it is gonna show you all of the colors. Of course, these are all digital swatches of the colors, so we don't wanna trust that all of the colors are going to be exactly what you see here. We definitely need to swatch them out and see exactly what they look like. And right here, they have a picture of the Fairy Queen that is on the front cover. And then they have a little blurb here just talking about the artwork on the front cover. And then it's going to come with all of this inside the tin. So we've got this here that just says, join the Castle Club today, a chance to win free prizes. And then of course you've got their website and how you can reach out to them if you need customer service. And then we get this color and product guide. And then they're gonna show you all of the different things they have available that you could purchase on their website. And I'm sure all of these things are on Amazon as well. And then when we open this up, we have all of the colors all listed here that are available. And then if you look at the top, it's, it will tell you pencils, color, watercolor, and all of the different products that they have available. Tinted graphite, water soluble, and then all of their different paints that they have available right here. I'll hold it a little closer so you could see. And then if you look at each one of these colors, like here for the uh, Naples yellow light, it will have a little red box and then it will have this other color box here. And so you can just look at the guide up here to tell you where this color is available. So you can get this color here in the, I believe this is for the 120 original set of colored pencils, and then the gold range, which is a new set that they just released that I'm trying to get info about that I think it may still be available on the UK site. It may already be sold out, but supposedly they're an oil-based range of pencils that they have just released. So you get the entire guide of all of their colors that are available. Over here, these are all the colors that are gonna be available in the newly released metallic set. 
And then over here we have all of the colors that are in this set that I'm going to show you today. And again, this set is available in the tin that I'm showing you today, as well as a case where they already come stored with some additional things included. And then down here, they just tell you all of the different products they have available and the different papers and the books and the pads. And then down here, we have another key, but I believe that key may be the same as the one that is up here at the top of this. And then we get this little pamphlet here and it just says create a pastel pencil illustration in six easy stages. So again, we have the swatch here of what these colors are in here, and we can see that they all have a number and they have a name. And then on the front, it's gonna talk a little bit about the Fairy Queen again, which is on the front of the cover of the tin. And then here again, we see their entire product range of everything else they have available because they've released quite a few new sets. And then it goes on over here to show us their paints. And then we get a swatch chart where we could swatch all the colors. And I may go ahead and swatch on here today instead of one of my swatch charts. We'll have to see, but this is really, really nice actually. And it will stay right in the tin and it's a really nice thick paper. It's smoother. I may go ahead and print my own swatch chart onto some Spring Hill paper because this paper is really smooth and I really wanna see how these uh, pencils perform. It's thick, but it doesn't have a whole lot of tooth. It's just one-sided and you can use it to swatch out your colors if you want to and then keep it inside here. Then we get this other pamphlet, Pastel Tint Pencils, taking your art to the next level. On the front, it just sort of tells you how to take care of your pencils. It gives you little tips here on how to sharpen your pencils. It talks about a single sharpener, an electric sharpener, and the sandpaper blocks. I've shown all of these things in previous videos if you're interested in pencil sharpeners and you are just starting with this wonderful hobby of adult coloring. Over here, we've got some information about the pencils. So it talks about the casing. It says finely grained natural, natural base wood for strength and easy of sharpening. It's gonna be color coded and have a uh, glossy finish on there. And we will see that in a minute. Crayon, soft, richly pigmented wax lead. Okay, so these are wax-based pencils. And that's where I was really curious about that because the new 120 gold set they just released is said to be oil-based. And I'm going to double, double check on that, but that is what I've heard. And that is what I thought I saw when I checked their website. And then they talk about the names on the pencils. All of our colors are clearly named for quicker, more intuitive color selection. And then they all have numbers on them. Each pencil is numbered for quick and easy swatching. We all love to have our numbers so we can put them on our swatch charts. And my swatch charts that I have available in my Etsy store, they're all gonna have spaces where you could put the number and the name of each pencil as well as swatch the pencil which with enough room so that you can do a gradient of light, medium, and dark. And I'll show you that when we get to the swatching. And then it talks about down here how they have video tutorials and tells you where to go to see those. And then it gives you information here on how to hold your pencils. And I'm not gonna read through all of this because it would just take too much time and I've got a lot to do in this video, but I'll just flip through here so you could see exactly what you get. Here they're showing you the uh, range of colors and they've got it in this sort of color wheel. Look how beautiful these colors are. And then it talks a little bit about color here so that you can understand the color wheel. And then here it talks all about the different meanings of colors. And this is really, really interesting. I really get into a lot of this. And I've really thought about making a video talking about the meanings of the different colors. So if you would like to see that, please let me know. And I'm not gonna go through the rest of the book. It talks about the strokes and all of that. But this is a really great guide and it's if you notice, there was a tutorial in the back. So that is really cool because most companies don't send you anything like this. And then we have our pencils. So we've got this little sheet on here. Oh, mine got a little bit torn on the corner. That's okay, my pencils are still protected and look how beautiful they look. This one has a little scratch on it. <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> but look how gorgeous these are. So here's the first tray and then the tin comes with these little uh, places to put your fingers so you could lift out. But I really love the companies that take the time to put these little handles here to where you could just pull right up on your tray so that you can see the next tray. But look at these colors. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> so let me hold this a little closer so you could take a look at the top tray. Look at these colors. So we're starting here with some pastel -y greens. We've got kind of like an olive green here. We've got a couple of them. Look at these colors. Let me hold the tips of the pencils a little bit closer so you could see those and not just the barrel. But oh my goodness, these are beautiful. We've got some pinks here and look at all the different shades of pinks and all the different shades of orange. And then we've got some yellows here. Bring that down so that you can see the leads of those. Look at these colors. Okay, and then we have the next tray. Look at that beautiful color. So it looks like we get one gray and then look at these purpley pink colors. And then we get a really pretty shade of like a mauvey type purple and then a pink and then a deeper pink. And then we get some purples here and that may be a gray. What is the name of this one? Actually, it's called Peach Rose. I don't know how much that looks like a peach rose to me. <laughs> and then we have a purple and then some blues. And oh, we have a pastel blue. Oh my gosh, you all know how much. I love light blue. Look at this blue, how light it is. And then we've got some teals and some greens and really pretty yellowy green colors. Look at this gorgeous bright green on the end here. That is so pretty. Oh my goodness. But yeah, this light blue right here, I cannot wait to swatch that one. I'm very excited about that color. You all know how excited I get when I see light blues in budget sets. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a closer look at these beautiful pencils. Let me go ahead and grab this orange here because you'll be able to see this a little bit better on camera since they're all such uh, pastel-y like colors. <laughs> so we have the name Castle Arts on this side and then we have the ring here just like the 120 set of um, Castle Arts, the previous set that we all know very well and then we have the name here that says pastel tent but you could see with these that these don't have the black barrel so if we turn it around we've got curl blush which is the name of this color and then we have 008 which is the number of the pencil and then i'm assuming that this pt stands for pastel tint and this is what the lead looks like when it comes to you. And of course, you all know I'm going to sharpen that. Always make sure when you receive new pencils that you do sharpen them because there is usually a wax protective film over the lead of the pencil. And you want to be able to get that off and you will find that they will uh, perform much better when you lay them down on paper. So before I do the blend test, I'll make sure that everything is sharpened. And of course, we have the sharpening test coming up as well as the blend test. Now let me show you these up against one of the pencils from the 120 set of Castle Arts. So this is the pencil that we are all, or most of us are pretty familiar with. It has the black barrel up to the silver ring right here, and then it has the number. So this is what they look like right next to one another. So you can see that they're different. I'm very, very curious as to whether or not these are the same pencil and they are just a different color. One of the reasons I bought these is because they are just so beautiful. I mean, if you look at them laying in the tin, they're just gorgeous. And I didn't have a pastel set yet. And so I really just jumped on these right when I saw them because I saw that I'm not sure about with other pastel sets because I don't have other pastel sets, but I noticed that you do get a couple darker colors in here and I had already seen a couple people swatch these in my Facebook group. So I was intrigued and I had to have them and I really wanted to be able to show them to you on my channel as well and review them. But you can see that you get not just the lighter colors, but you do get a couple darker colors in here as well, which I thought was really, really neat because we always need three colors to create a color combination and we really need some of those darker colors too. If I wanted to sit down and do a whole coloring page with just these pencils, I would wanna have some brighter colors like this color right here. Look how beautiful that is. Or this color here, as well as some more muted tones. 
and this one just really fits that and exactly what I would be looking for if I were shopping around for a pastel set of pencils. And I figure that I could mix these with my Prisma colors if I wanted to as well, and it just gives me more colors to be able to work with. And when we get to the blend test, I'm also going to try these out with my Prisma colors for those of you that are cu curious so that we could see how they perform together with one another. When it comes to pricing, like I said earlier in the video, these are not currently available on Amazon. They are $34.99. You can order them now if you want to, and then it has a delivery date of November 25th to December 4th. So they will be coming back in stock if you want the one in the tin. You can also purchase this set on Amazon in a case. I'm assuming it is the same case I have here where I've got my original 120 set of Castle Arts. And I really, really do like these cases. I believe looking at the picture and seeing what other people have shared in my Facebook group, it is the same case. It does still have the flaps where you could flip the sections back and forth, but I think since there's only 48 pencils, you are going to have probably just one flap in the center at most, I believe. That set also comes with some black paper, some white paper that you could sketch on, as well as a Bristol board paper sketch pad, and I believe they're just like probably smaller sample sizes of those that you can use to just test out some of their paper. And I believe it is the paper that they offer that you could purchase on their website or Amazon. But everything else would remain the same. Getting the case for just an extra $10 is probably a really good idea because I'm going to have to purchase a case anyway to put these in and put them in my bookshelf with all of my other colored pencil sets. And as we all know, I'm going to pay more than $10 to purchase a case, but I like my cases being pretty. <laughs> I do really like the Castle Art case, but I really do want to get another one of my favorite cases. If y'all haven't seen my previous videos where I show my favorite cases, I will put favorite case down in the description box below so that you can check those out for yourself. But I just think that they are prettier and they look like this and I like to have the, this particular case in my office and I have several of them just because this is the colors in my office and I absolutely love it. So I like to put my pencils in a case like this. There is also a newly released metallic set that also comes with 48 pencils. And that one is also $34.99 for that set. And I believe that set also comes in a set where you can get it in the case as well for an extra $10. As with all my reviews on every colored pencil set that I've ever done, <laughs> I always like to test them out in my doll 133. Y'all know this is my favorite pencil sharpener. I also just did a video very recently where I tested out an electric pencil sharpener and it was this one here. I actually tested out two different electric pencil sharpeners. So I have this one here as well as this one. And so if you are somebody who has um, pain in your hand or you really just can't use a sharpener like this for any reason or you are going through and having to sharp a ton of pencils like this or like 120 set of pencils or anything more than just freshening up your pencils while you're coloring, then you may be interested in an electric pencil sharpener and there is a review on my channel and I'll link that up in the upper right hand corner so that you could see that video, but I really love this pencil sharpener out of the two. I always test the pencil doll 133 because this is still my absolute favorite and this is the one that I always go to first if I don't need to sharpen quite a bit of pencils. And lately I've kind of been going back and forth between the jar link and between this one. But we are going to use this one to test these pencils because with this one I find that it is much easier to tell whether the pencils are harder or softer when trying to determine the quality of the wood because it has the crank handle and we can crank it after we put the pencil in and we can test the quality of the wood on the pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this really pretty green color here. This one is called Savannah and I'm just going to stick it in the pencil sharpener. And that was pretty easy to sharpen. You can tell when 
the doll stop sharpening and that means it's time to go ahead and pull your pencil out and then you just push this and then we have a beautiful lid on our pencil. Look how gorgeous that is. Let's go ahead and try one more because as you all know with budget friendly pencils, I'm gonna choose another color from another color family. I think I'm gonna go with orange. We'll use the same one we looked at before, but this one is the coral blush again and I'm gonna pull this out, but as you know with budget friendly pencils, some of them can be inconsistent as far as the way they lay down on the paper or the way they feel when you sharpen them. With some of them, some of the colors will feel harder when you sharpen them and some of them will feel a little bit softer. So let's go ahead and turn the lever. And these are very easy to sharpen, so it seems as though the wood is pretty good quality. If you were to take something like a Crayola pencil and you were to put it in this pencil sharpener, you would have to really, really push hard on this crank here to sharpen the pencil because the wood in those pencils is so cheap and it is just so hard because, of course, they are very, very budget friendly. <laughs> And I don't know, I still love Crayola because they are just a classic. I used them when I was a kid. I actually have a video on my channel where I colored a butterfly with the Crayola pencils and it turned out absolutely beautiful. So I don't ever knock the Crayola pencils. I still love them and I still use them. Now it's time to go ahead and move into the swatching part of the video. We're gonna swatch out all of the colors. I was going to swatch them on one of my swatch charts. These are available in my Etsy store. And I had said in the beginning of the video that I was gonna go ahead and do it on this one because this is a Spring Hill paper and I really wanted to see how they perform as I lay them down. But I'm going to save this for later because I'm going to create a swatch chart that has 48 spaces on it. Right now my Etsy store, I only have 72 and 120. So I am going to create one that has 48 specifically to be able to swatch some of these pencils or any other 48 cent I may be interested in the future. Or for any of you that may have a 48 set or are grabbing this metallic set and the pastel set, and you would like to have a swatch chart that has just 48 spaces on it. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section below and I will put a push on that and try to make sure I get that done super quickly and make it available to everyone. But for this video, since this one already has the color name on it, I'm gonna go ahead and swatch out on here because when I get into the blend test of the video, which will be next, we are going to go ahead and uh, use the Spring Hill paper to test out these pencils and see how they perform. But this will give us a chance to, to see how they do on a much smoother paper because this swatch chart that came with the pencils is very smooth. This will also give me an opportunity to have a swatch chart in my binder as well as a swatch chart in with the pencils if I ever want to take them and be on the go with them. So let's go ahead and do this first color. This one is called Orchid White. And as most of you know, I like to lay down one layer and then I like to come back just halfway with a second layer. And then I like to do a third layer at the top. I like to see all the different values I can get from each color when I lay them down on my coloring page. This one is called Mimosa and it looks like we're moving down here now. I guess I'm gonna have to keep just checking the names of the colors. <laughs> But these are laying down very nicely on this smoother paper. So there's my second layer, and then my third for my darkest part of my gradient. These are really pretty. This one is saffron. Okay, so it looks like we're moving down this direction on our swatch chart instead of across. Look at that bright, beautiful color. That's gorgeous. And this one is called Magnolia. You all have to let me know in the comments below if you have this set already. And if you don't, what do you think of these colors? This one is called Rosa. And will you be picking these up <laughs> after watching this review? I love to hear in the comments section about your collections of pencils because there's so many of us that are collectors and just need to have them all. <laughs> And I am one of those, and of course, I still don't have them all. This one is called Almond Rose. Since having a YouTube channel, I've actually acquired quite a bit. <laughs> and my art studio is getting quite full, <laughs> almost to the point of overload, where I can't fit anything anymore. 
This next one is called Petunia Pink. Look how pretty that is. And that one's gonna go right up here. And then we're gonna come back with our second layer and then our darkest. I just really like being able to see the gradient of the colors on my swatch charts. So this is Coral Blush. Some of you that are beginners at swatching or even using colored pencils had let me know when I asked in my Facebook group about, you know, applying like the darker and, you know, the medium and then the lighter and creating the gradient of the color on your swatch charts. You had said you really were not skilled enough to be able to do that. This is Blushing Rose. So what I did for those of you, well, hopefully after watching this video, you could see exactly how I do it. I just, like I said, lay the first layer, then I go back and I lay a second layer and I don't come all the way down using a little bit harder pressure. And then I come back with much harder pressure and just fill in the top there. But I went and created a swatch chart that's available in my Etsy store. This one is called Amerilis. But I went ahead and put a division line on the swatch chart to make it much easier. So you could just do hard pressure, medium pressure, and then much lighter pressure. So I always have my Etsy store linked in the description box below in case you are looking for swatch charts. This one is called Foxglove. But if you check my Etsy store, you will also find I have a tutorial workbook in my store that is 29 pages long, and it will teach you exactly how to blend your colors together, how to choose your colors, how to create a smooth transition when you're blending your colors together. And it is a full tutorial workbook and has examples and allows you to be able to follow along right next to the examples, and then it gives you a box next to it to where you can do your own work and follow exactly what I did. This one is called Peach Cream, and then Snow Waffle, so we're going back to the top now. Now we have Carnation, and usually I do these to speed, and then just come back and talk about the colors, but since there were only 48 colors in this set, I figure, oh, why not? <laughs> and if any of you want to just speed it up, and go through the video at a faster rate. You can do that and watch the colors lay down on the paper. This one is Cream Rose. I have to keep going back and checking the name on the pencil to make sure I'm not putting something in the wrong space. And then we have Apricot Twist. I also wanted to use this swatch chart because the boxes are much bigger on here. And then we have Candy, what does that say? Candy Tuft interesting names. <laughs> Very creative. So we've got one layer, the second layer, and then much harder pressure. And I'm using really hard pressure and these are not breaking on me. I guess we'll see if I spoke too soon as we get further into this swatch. <laughs> this one is called Inca Gold. Oh, look at that pretty color. That is gorgeous, and to have something like that in a pastel set, that's awesome. Oh my goodness, I wanna use this one in my blend test with some yellows, that's really pretty. So I'm gonna set this one aside. Okay, so this one is Begonia. There are some beautiful greens in this set. I can't wait to see after I lay them all down. But I did take these out and play with them quite a bit last night and colored something in a coloring book just because I wanted to see how they perform. This one is called Sunflower. But when I filmed this video, I actually did it in pieces because I wanted to be able to do the unboxing. And then I wanted to be able to play with these a little bit in my own time before I came and finished the video. So this one is Juniper Lime. Look at these greens, they're just gorgeous. So this is Daylily. And there we go, that one broke just a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so we have Savannah. Look how pretty these greens are. So many different shades of green, and then the greens with the yellow and this sunflower color. Wow, that might be one of my favorites so far. Now we're moving on to the next tray, and the first color we have is this beautiful color called Lime Coral. Wow, that's gorgeous. Oh goodness, it is so pretty. The next one is Jasmine. I'm trying to make sure and check when I grab the pencil that I am grabbing the white one before I lay it down. 
because <laughs> I don't want to mess up my swatch. This one is green flower, and so I only had that one breakage when I used a little bit of harder pressure. So these are a harder pencil, and this one is Verity. Not even sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Look how pretty. This is like a gorgeous teal color. Come back in here with a second layer. These are laying really nicely down on this smoother paper. I'm glad I decided to swatch on this instead of the Spring Hill paper because that will give us a chance to see how they perform on the smoother paper as well as the uh, Spring Hill paper, which has a lot more tooth. This one is Angelica, another gorgeous green color. Look how pretty. Y'all can make some gorgeous leaves with this set. Look at all these greens in here. These two here look very similar, but this one is darker than this one. This one is Periwinkle. This particular one feels a little bit scratchier than the others. I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but that is the only color. This Periwinkle is the only color I experienced that with so far. But it did have a little bit of scratchiness to it when I laid it down on the swatch chart. Now that may be different if I was using something, you know, or a paper that had a little more tooth. This one is Delphinium. Wow, these are so beautiful. And then this one here, I was using this last night. <laughs> Y'all know how, if you've, been, if you've been watching my channel for a while, this is called Blue Poppy. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, y'all know I love pale blues. And I was so excited to see a very pale blue like what I would get in my Prismacolor or my Luminance set in a budget, more budget-friendly set. Now, I don't know, when we talk about budget-friendly, this set is $34.99 for 48 pencils. And when we get into that, that kind of pulls us out of the budget range, I would assume. This one is called Blue Daisy but that kind of pulls us out of the budget range of pencils because we can get something like 120 set of Brute Fooners for like what, last week we were able to get them for $19 <laughs> because they had a 40% off coupon. This one is called Blue Mist. And so if we compare it to another budget set, it's kind of out of the budget range as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> but to have a set of pastels, you would really have to compare it to other sets that are just a set of pastels. This one is called Larkspur. I think they got a little bit out of order. So this one is down here. I probably put them out of order when I was using them last night, but I just had to try out that light blue and see what I could do with it. And then this one is the Bluebell, which is up here. And this one must be the Lo Lobelia and did I forget to sharpen this one? I think I forgot to sharpen this one. That's okay. And this one feels, oh, I need to sharpen this because right now it feels a little bit scratchier. Okay, now it feels better. And see, that's what I was explaining to y'all uh, earlier in the video. When you get your pencils, this one is called hydrang hydrangea, but when you get your pencils, make sure that you sharpen them first because if you don't sharpen them, you're not removing that wax film or the wax protectant film a lot of these pencils come with. And so you're really not getting the true feel of the pencils when you lay them down on your paper. Okay, so Peach Rose is way down here. So my pencils must have either gotten out of order or were already out of order. Definitely does not look like a Peach Rose to me. <laughs> this one is Heather. We are back where we're supposed to be here. These colors are just so pretty though. And then what do we have next here? I think this is Wisteria. And so I only felt the scratchiness on that one blue color earlier. And of course the other one that I thought that I felt was a little bit scratchy, it was just because I hadn't sharpened it. But these are going down really creamy and smooth on the smoother paper. This one is Tickle Pink. These are pretty deeply pigmented if you could see how they're going down on the paper, especially with that one that I turned just a little bit and then used my harder pressure, but the pigment went right down on the paper. This one is Camellia, a second layer, and then a third layer. So when I use really hard pressure, they are really laying that pigment down on that paper. And there's really no scratchiness at all from these. This one's called Jelly Bean. Oh, I love that name. <laughs> that is the perfect name for a color like this, right? And then this is Pearl, it's spelled like Perle. <laughs> and then a second layer and our third layer with harder pressure. That's a pretty color. 
And then our last one is Winterberry, because we already did this one. You probably can't see that very well on camera, but it's there if you remember we already did it. This is Winterberry, and so it looks like we get one gray in this set. Sure, that's a really pretty gray, though. It looks like it is a cool gray. That's really pretty. Okay, so here's all our colors. And look how pretty they are. I'm so excited about this set. When I swatched them, there was no dust or anything. There's a couple of them where I pushed a little bit harder, like on this one here, and then this one here, I could see a little bit of dust. But the rest of them, I don't see any. It looks like a little bit of the blue came from over here and got on top of that one. But I don't see any dust or anything except for where I pushed really, really hard. And they lay down really smooth and creamy except for that one blue color. I can't remember which one it was now. That felt just a little bit scratchy. So the white that we get called Orchid White is sort of like an off-white. It looks more like a yellow. I would call it more of like a cream. And then we have this beautiful bright yellow. And then we have a couple um, oranges here. We've got like a peachy orange here. And then we have these two here would be would make really great lighter skin tones. And then this one here called Almond Rose is a bright, beautiful, really pastel orange. And then our oranges start to come into here where they get a little bit of pink into them into where we have a very true pink. And then this one is called Peach Cream. That's another color that would probably be a great lighter skin tone, as well as some of these here. We've got this Cream Rose but it looks like we have quite a few colors in here that would be great if you were doing some lighter skin tones. And then we've got this gorgeous, gorgeous Inca Gold. I think that might be my favorite color in the entire set. I don't know that I have another color in another set that has this much gold in it. Look at that color. Wow, that color, I look at it and it just screams to me, color with me now. <laughs> I mean, if you use the different values from this color on a coloring page and you were trying to create gold, you can probably use this one pencil to create gold on anything on your coloring pages. And then when we come up here, we've got quite a few greens. Look at all of these greens we have. We have like this gold green here that is really, really beautiful. I love that one almost as much as I love this one. But look at all of these greens. This color I absolutely love, but I love a color like that in any set that I have. And then we get into our blues. So we've got some blues that have green in them. And then we get into our more truer blues here. We've got another blue that is more like a teal blue. We've got this gorgeous Larkspur color. And then we have hydrang Hydrangea, which is like a purpley blue. That's a really pretty color. And then we have some pinky blues here. We get over here and we've got some more pinks. So we've got a pinky purple here, and then we get like a hot pink, which is gorgeous. And then we come over here and we have this gorgeous color called Jelly Bean. That's really, really pretty. Then we come down here and we've got this more muted tone that is kind of like a muted mauve. It's really, really nice. And then this winter berry, it looks like a cool gray, but it almost looks silver. It's really, really pretty. And then down here we have the peach rose. I wouldn't really call that a peach rose. I don't see any peach in that. <laughs> At least I don't. I know we all see color differently, but when I look at this, I see kind of like a beigey gray tone, and it's really pretty. And that would prob probably be a really pretty highlight color, or even if you wanted to mix it with some of your other pencil sets, this would be a really pretty highlight color to do something like stone or brick or something like that. But those are all of our colors laid out and I really love them, they're absolutely beautiful. Y'all have to let me know what you think down in the comments below after you've seen all these swatched out. But we are gonna go ahead and do the blend test now and I'm gonna do quite an extensive blend test with these because I really wanna test these out with different pencils. I wanna see how they perform on my Spring Hill paper. I wanna test them with the Prisma colors. I want to blend them together within the same color family and out of their color family, just to really, really put these to the test. Okay, so I have my piece of Spring Hill paper here, and the first thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to test these for blendability, see how many layers I can get down on this paper that has quite a bit more tooth. But even on that um, smoother paper, when I was doing the swatches, 
If you followed along with that, you could see that there were at least three layers I was able to get down on the much smoother paper. And I was even able to come back like when I did this one over here and I noticed how pigmented they were. I was able to get four layers down here where I made the color much, much darker. So let's go ahead and test these out for blendability. And I'm gonna look at my swatch chart here and see what colors I can put together that would look really pretty together. I really wanted to be able to use this Inca Gold. And so for this blend test, I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna use the Inca Gold along with the Magnolia. And then I have the Saffron. Okay, so they should be in this order. And I think they'll look really pretty together. Let's see how they blend. And I'm gonna let you all count the layers as I lay them down, because every time I try to do that, <laughs> I always get mixed up and I lose track. So let me go ahead and lay down this Inca Gold. And then I'm going to come back with the Saffron and blend that right into the Inca Gold and come down just a little bit here and then lift up before I come into that highlight color. Look how pretty that is. And then this is my Magnolia. And the Magnolia and the Saffron they are pretty close. The saffron is darker than the magnolia, but it may just take another layer. So let me go ahead and come back here. And these are laying down very nicely on this paper. Very, very nicely. Well, let's come back with the saffron. And then again with the magnolia. These are laying down beautifully on this paper. They really, really are. Now, these are really, really close, and probably if I was testing another set of pencils and not just a straight up all pastel colors, I probably would have chosen another color to use for the highlight color because if we look at the swatch chart here, here's the saffron and here's the magnolia, and you can tell that there is a difference between the two of them, and this one is darker, but they are still very, very close. And when I'm putting together color combinations, I like to make sure that I've got something that's very, very light. Maybe I should have done the orchid white with those instead, but you probably wouldn't have been able to hardly see that on video. So let's go ahead and lay another layer, and I'm gonna come back the other direction. But look how nicely these are transitioning from one color to the other, and I still got quite a bit of white of the paper left here. Look how pretty that color is. It's gorgeous. And then we'll come back with this lighter color but even the Inca Gold to this mid-tone color, the Saffron, they are blending together very nicely at that transition being that there is a pretty big difference in the value of those two colors. And they're going down really smooth and creamy and very, very nice. And I'm still able to keep piling these layers. I'm really surprised, I don't think that these are the same as the original Castle Art set. We are going to test that and I'm gonna lay them down one right next to the other and see how they feel in my hand on this paper to be able to see if these are the same. But I was really curious about that just because the barrels look so different and we don't have that black barrel anymore. Now, we still do here at the transition, you could see that it's not like smooth, smooth. I mean, it's probably as smooth as it's going to get because the difference in the colors is so great here. But if I just kept coming back and these this paper is allowing me to keep laying layers and layers, but it will get smoother as I continue to come back and go back and forth with these two colors. But that's pretty good <laughs> for a set like this. And like I said, I don't know that I would really consider these budget friendly just because it's $34.99 and you are getting 48 pencils, but considering it's like a specialty set where you're getting just only pastel colors, I would think that it is pretty much worth it. But they blended together really nicely. And you can see here that it was a little bit more difficult to get these two to blend together just because the value in this color is much greater than the value in this color. But these two here, they blended together very, very smoothly at that transition. 
because the colors were much closer together. And we're really gonna test these out because I want to get two different colors that are from two completely different uh, color families and I'm gonna test that out now. Maybe I will do like maybe a brighter blue with like yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So maybe like a hydrangea, the hydrangea color, which was really, really pretty. And then I want to blend that together or try to blend that together with a periwinkle and see what I can come up with. So let me show you these two here on the swatch. So here's a hydrangea color. And then here is the periwinkle. So we're going from purple to blue. I think those would be really pretty together if we could get a really nice blend. So let's try the periwinkle as well. Okay, so let's see what we can come up with here. Here now so when you're blending colors together that are different from one another it's okay to use harder pressure here at the top and then start to lift up when you get into where you want to transition those two colors and then I'm going to come back here with this color and I'm going to lay it right over that color and try to blend them in there and create a really smooth transition between the two colors and then I'm going to come back and do it again a second time and again, I'm gonna lift up as I come into that color and that will help me make or create a very smooth transition of these two colors. And then each time you come back, you can use a little bit more pressure and then just come up towards the bottom. Now let me go back the other direction to fill some of that white of the paper and I'm gonna pull it down into that blue. And look how those two colors are blending together at the transition. That is really, really nice. They are blending together seamlessly. Look at that. And look at that gorgeous color they created where they blended together with one another. Now let me come back and just try to get another layer down here and pull into that transition line. And look at that color it created. Very, very nice. I'm really quite impressed with these pencils. <laughs> and I never really before had the desire to have a pastel set just because I like to have, you know, the darker colors and everything available to be able to put together the perfect color combinations to put a lot, you know, to bring a lot of depth and dimension and to make the things on my coloring pages really pop. But look how nicely those blended and it almost looks like I used three colors because if you look in the center here, it, com it uh, created a completely different color in a beautiful color. So even though you've only got 48 pencils here, you can create so much more with those 48 pencils because we can see that they are blending together beautifully to create other colors. Maybe we'll do a blend test as well where we take two different colors and blend them together and we will see what we can come up with. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna be a little bit daring here because I picked the lime coral just because it's such a pretty color. And I wanna to try to create a bright, bright, like green color with these two colors. So I'm gonna lay them down first and show you what the swatch looks like. So of course we could see, I'm using the same color I used over here. This is the periwinkle. So of course we could already see the periwinkle here, but I'm gonna lay this periwinkle down here and I'm going to lay this, what was it called, lime coral? Yeah, lime coral down over here. Now I'm gonna come down here and I am going to do a blend of these two colors and see what we can come up with. And to do a blend of two colors, you can see how that worked right here when I did that, um, that blend test over there with that color combination. But where the colors meet and blend in with one another, they're just going to create another color. Look how pretty. Let me get a couple more layers down here so you can see this with harder pressure just because I've got so many more layers over there in the other one where I have the two colors blended together. And then you can really see the difference in the new color that I created. And then I'm gonna come back over here and get a really good blend of these two colors together. But see how you could just create other colors that are not necessarily in the set when you have a smaller set. Look how pretty that is. So I took this color and this color and I created that. <laughs> 
So isn't that so neat? Even when you have a smaller set of pencils, you can take two colors and you can blend them together and you could create another color. And of course, when you're doing that and you're gonna bring it to your coloring pages, always make sure you test it out off to the side before you try and attempt to do it on your coloring pages. You could even do this like where you did, where I did this over here. And this almost looks like three different colors. When you're coloring your object on your coloring page, this is more so how you would wanna do it. You would wanna just pick the two colors you wanna use and then where the two colors are meeting one another, you could just create a much bigger area of that color where the two are meeting. So if you did that, it would just look like on any object that you were coloring on your coloring page, it would look like that you actually had three colors laid down rather than just two because you all saw I just used two colors here and we actually have a third color there in the center. And then you can see how I took these two colors and blended them together and made this gorgeous uh, green with the blue and the green. <laughs> it just sort of changed the shade of the color and it turned out really, really pretty. But you could do that with any of the colored pencils that you have in your set and blend together whatever you want and just kind of get creative and play around with them off to the side before you lay them on your coloring page. So now I have one of my regular Castle Art pencils from my 120 set and I want to see how this one lays down on this paper because I'm really curious, like I said, to know if these are the same pencils. Okay, so those go down really nicely on this paper. I don't know, let me see, let me try it again. These feel a little bit waxier, I think. Yeah, when I'm laying this down, this feels a little bit waxier on this paper or chalkier, I'm not sure what word is really fitting, but yeah, they go down a little bit differently. And these feel more like if I was laying down an oil-based pencil. Let me try it again. Yeah, they feel different. These feel more like if I was laying down one of my oil-based pencils, and that's why they went down so nicely on that smoother paper. And then when I lay down these, they feel more like what I would expect from like a wax-based pencil, if that makes sense. Now, I know these are supposed to be a wax-based pencil, but every single pencil does contain wax and oil, and they really determine whether or not it's a wax-based uh, pencil or an oil-based pencil, dependent upon the percentage of each that is contained within the core of the pencil. These Castle Art pencils from the 120 set, they do feel different when they go down on the paper than these pastels do. So I think that they are actually different. But what I did learn by swatching this Castle Art pencil from the 120 set out on my uh, Spring Hill paper, it seems that these would be very nice to work with actually on the Spring Hill paper. So I'll have to try that and test that out just a little bit later after I'm done filming this video. And I will update y'all if you, if you have any questions about that, just leave them in the comments below and I'll do a few more tests and then I will let you know in the comments below this video. Okay, and the last thing that I wanna do in this video is I wanna see how well these particular pencils work with a Prismacolor and how they play together on the paper. So I have my hydrangea and I'm going to blend that together with the lilac just so I could see how this how this set blends with the Prismacolors for those of you that may want to use them with your Prismacolors because I know for me I will definitely be using them with another pencil set because a 48 set of pencils is not enough for me. <laughs> I like to have many more colors than that and I like to have choices, but I bought this set because I wanted to have all of these beautiful colors. So let me go ahead and lay down the hydrangea and then I am going to add the lilac, the Prismacolor lilac, and we are going to see how they blend together. And look at that smooth transition and we're even creating a new color again, right there at that transition. But yeah, they blend together really nicely with the Prismacolors. Wow. Yeah, these work really, really nice. Let me go back the other direction and pull it down into that lilac. Look how smooth that transition is. Wow. So that transition is almost seamless there where we've got the Prismacolor and the 
Castle Art uh, pastel tint pencils. That is just seamless. <laughs> So yeah, they work well with the Prisma colors too. So the last thing I want to do in this blend test is I want to see how well these work with the original 120 set of Castle Arts. So like I showed you here, I feel like they are definitely two different pencils because when I lay them down, they feel much different on this paper. And it took me a few times to really determine that, but they definitely feel different. So I'm going to take my... Uh, cadmium orange deep from my original 120 set and I'm going to try to blend that together with the almond rose and we are going to see what happens here and they blend together beautifully it has been said that these are completely new colors in this set and I've not actually pulled out my Castle Art set to test them and do a comparison of the colors, but look at that beautiful seamless blend there between these two pencils. So if you have the original Castle Art set, you have an extra 48 colors to be able to play with if you wanna use all your Castle Arts together. Now there is a new set that Castle Art has come out with and that is the 120 gold set. As far as I know right now, they're only available on the Amazon UK site, and so they're not available for those of us in the US yet. I have an email out to Castle Art and I've not been responded to quite yet. I'm trying to get some more information on these pencils, and so I'm still waiting. <laughs> but as soon as I find out a little bit more, I will update y'all and let you know. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. <laughs> It was quite a long one to film and I want to be able to get this all edited and up for y'all as soon as possible. So this was like a one and done in a day video and so I still have a lot of work ahead of me but I felt like this video was very important because y'all have had so many questions about these pencils and I wanted to make sure that my review of these pencils was extremely thorough and you can see that I did quite a bit of work here on the blend test because I really like my blend tests to really show y'all exactly how the pencils perform and the blendability. And in this case, because I thought that they were different from the original 120 set, I really wanted to be able to see what they can do. And because they are just pastel colors, I mean, we have a few darker colors in here, but with a set of 48, we really need to know if we can take these pencils and blend them together with other pencils. So I wanted to be able to answer all those questions in this video today. So I hope that this video answered all your questions. If you have any more questions, please leave those in the comments below. And anything that you've seen in this video, I will have linked down in the description box. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.